<laughs> well, thank you all for coming. Uh, so we're going to get started, and uh, so what we're going to do next is I'm going to show you a video um, that Ms. Wasilinko made uh, talking about phonological awareness and rhyming. Welcome to the SVSU Phonological Awareness Virtual Game Night. I'm Karen Wasilinko, the SVSU Can you hear it? Literacy Coach. I'm here today to talk to you about phonological awareness. Wait. Phonological I can awareness hear a little bit. to recognize and manipulate the sounds of spoken language. That occurs in whole words, syllables, and sounds. Let me show you some of the activities your children may be doing in school to develop the skill of phonological awareness. Oh my, Let's start at the word level, which is one of the easiest levels we work on. So at the word level, we talk about rhyming. Yeah. So your teacher will <laughs> say to your, your children, I'm gonna say two words. If they rhyme, put your thumb up. If they don't rhyme, put your thumb down. So let's do a few examples. Say rain chain. And the students would respond rain, by saying rain. rain chain. And the teacher would say, do those words rhyme? The kids would put their thumb up. Let's try a few together. Say how cow. How cow. Do those words rhyme? We would put our thumb up. How about these two words? That boat. Do those words rhyme? Those words do not rhyme. Let's try these two words. Was him. Do those words rhyme? Those words do not rhyme. They do not sound alike. Another part of rhyming would go like this. The teacher may say, tell me a word that rhymes with play. Students can respond by saying way, hey, may, say. They all sound alike, so therefore they would rhyme. On the word level, we would also do this type of activity. Students would put their hands up like this. The teacher would say, say goldfish. And the kids would respond, goldfish. What are the two parts in goldfish? Gold fish. Let's try one together. Say popcorn, popcorn. What are the two words that make up popcorn? Popcorn. Let's try one more. Say cupcake, cupcake. What are the two words that make up cupcake? Cup, cake. And that's how it would work on the word level. The next level we have is called the syllable level. Syllable are word parts, parts of one word. So an activity might look like this. Kids would put their hands like choppers. The teacher would say, say, gar, den. And the kids would go, gar, den, sweep it together. Garden is the whole word. God. Let's try it together. God. Say elbow. 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 Bow. Let's try one more together. Say insect. 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 And that's a skill you would work on on the syllable level. The next level is called onset and rhyme. It's a little bit more difficult level. Onset is the beginning sound before the vowel. Rhyme are the sounds that are the vowel and all the letters that follow the vowel. So here's an example. In the word big, b is the beginning sound. That's the onset. Ig is called the rhyme part. That would be the last part of the word. One more example, flip. In the word flip, fool is the onset. Ip would be the rhyme part. That would then lead us to phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness prepares students to hear the individual sounds in spoken words, to develop an awareness of each individual sound. There are many skills involved with phonemic awareness on various difficult levels. Your learner will get opportunities to practice phonemic awareness skills with their teacher during the course of the day. Phonemic awareness is a critical, important skill to becoming a successful reader. Next month in February, as well as in March, we will be having activities that deal with phonemic awareness. But for now, let's have some fun creating some rhyming games. Enjoy your time with your child creating these games and spending time together. Thank you. Great. All right. 
Thank you, Ms. Wasilenko. I hope you're all able to hear that okay. Um, what we're gonna do next is our first game that we're gonna do is just a warm up game. So I'm going to read some riddles, some rhyming riddles, and you're going to try to um, figure out the rhyming word that matches um, the word I give. So I'm gonna read the riddle. You're going to whisper your answer to the adult next to you or to um, another student that's next to you. And then you can raise your hand to give the answer, okay? And we'll call on someone to give the answer. All right? All right, so it says, rhyming riddles, here we go. It's a question you might know. Play with words, hey diddle diddle, can you solve the rhyming riddle? What drives in the street, uses wheels and not feet, it, its name rhymes with star, we call it a, all right. Ms. Sleesman, do you wanna call on someone? Sure, Audrey G Griffin. Car. Car, yay, you got it. Woo! Woo! Do a, a me too if you were going to um, give that answer as well, if you thought it was car too. Awesome. All right, are you ready for the next one? Here it comes. What runs around parks? It makes noise when it barks. Its name rhymes with frog. We call it a... Blake. and do this if you were thinking of dog as well. You guys are great at this. All right, let's try this next one. Maybe we can trick you. What falls from the sky makes you wet and not dry? Its name rhymes with plain. We call it the... Kylie. Rain. Yay! Yes! Plain and rain rhyme. Great job. Go ahead and do this if you also thought it was rain. Rain and plain. Good, 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 great. All right, here comes another one. Who wears a big crown and a beautiful gown? Her name rhymes with green. We call her a... Rhymes with green. Beasley. Queen. Queen, yay! Green and queen rhyme. Awesome job. All right, here comes another one. Are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? All right. Esri remembered to do the me too. She was on that. <laughs> oh, yes, <yeah>, sorry. <laughs> yes, me too, if you were thinking of queen. Thank you, Audrey. What's fun and it's round and it bounces up and down. Its name rhymes with tall. We call it a... Esri. Tall ball. Yes, tall and ball rhyme. Great job. Give a me too if you were thinking of ball, ball and tall. Okay, last one for this game, ready? What has, what has apes and bat and big wild cats? Its name rhymes with blue, we call it a... So what has apes and, and a bat and big wild cats? Its name rhymes with blue. We call it a hmm, tough one. Paisley, you think you have it? Zoo. Zoo. Good job. <laughs> blue and zoo. Give a me too if you are also thinking it was zoo. I thought that was a tricky one. Great job, everyone. Give yourselves a round of applause. That was fun. I love rhyming riddles. 
All right, so next up is we're gonna go over the two games that were that was sent home in those baggies. So you should have them handy with you. If you don't, that's okay. The first game we're gonna go over is called the a Rhyming A Lot O. And it looks, the cover looks like this. That's the first game we're gonna go over. All right, just give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Awesome, okay, great. So first I'm going to talk about how you put the game together and the rules of the game, and then we'll go over the next game and at the end we'll get to play it, okay? All right. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do to prepare for this game is in the packet, if you flip the page, you're going to see some game boards. And there's a few game boards in there. And at the very end, you're going to see cards, game cards. So the boards have the title up at the top, rhyming a lot, oh, those are the boards and the cards don't have that title at the top, okay? So what you're gonna do, and you're, you don't have to do this now, is you're gonna cut out the board and each player gets a different board, okay? So if you have two players, you might use the, the first board and the second board, okay? And then the cards, you'll have to go to the back of the cards and you're gonna cut out the cards. You might wanna color them first, since they are black and white to make it a little bit more interesting, you might wanna color them, but that's up to you. So I'm gonna show you my example. I cut out the first board and I colored in the pictures to make it look a little bit nicer. And I also put it on um, a file folder just to make it sturdy. You don't have to do that, but that is an option if you want to do it. You can put it on construction paper or cardstock if you want. Um, but this is just one option, but again, you don't have to. And I cut out some of my cards, okay? So again, you don't have to do any of this now. We're gonna have time later to do it. So when you're ready to play, each player gets a board and you put your cards in a pile face down, okay? So you can't see the picture. And the first player will pick the top card. So I'm gonna do an example. I'm gonna pick the top card off the pile and you're going to look at the picture and say the word of the picture. Now adults who are with you, you might wanna write the name of the picture just for your reference because some of the pictures are a little confusing and you might not be sure what it is of. So it's helpful to write the words on there. And I also wrote some words on the board too, um, just so you remember. They're not supposed to read the words, but that's just for you just to be helpful. So the first player would say light. And then you'd look on your board to see if you have a word that rhymes with light. So I look on my board, I'm gonna say light goat. Nope, those don't rhyme. Light cab. Nope, light chair. Light lock. Light gum. Mm -mm. Light horn. No, Ugh. light soap. Nope. Light map, light moose. No, I don't have any ones that rhyme with light. So what I have to do, oh well, what I have to do is I have to put that on the bottom of my pile and then it's the next player's turn, okay? And then I would go again, say I got this word float. I would say float and I'd say, look at my board, float goat, do those rhyme? Float goat. Audrey Griffin, yes, thank you, they do rhyme. <gasps> Yay! So I got a match, so I can put this card on top of float. So I just place it on top, and then the next player goes. And you keep playing until your whole board is full or until you get through the cards, okay? So I just have a few tips and tricks for this game, and I've already shared a few, but let me share my screen real quick so I can show you my notes. So I already said that you might wanna write the name of the word on the card for your reference. Students can color the pictures first if they want. 
And we talked about how we could make them more sturdy. So if you wanna put them on cardstock or construction paper, um, if there's no match on the board, if you want to um, challenge them, you can ask for a word that would rhyme with that word on their card. So, for example, the first one that I had that there was no rhyme for light, you can say, well, what would rhyme with light? Light, bright, those rhyme. Or once they find a match, you can ask if they can think of an additional word, uh, rhyming word. So you can ask, well, what else would rhyme with float and goat? Moat. And then uh, you can exchange boards and play again. So maybe you want to switch boards with your partner or pick a different board and play again. Or maybe this board is too big for you and you want to use less pictures. You can cut the board smaller so that maybe you have six instead of nine. And that might just make for a shorter game. Or you could do like bingo and try to get three in a row instead of the whole board. Right, so those are just some different ways that you can play this game at home. Before we move on to the next game, do you have any questions? Okay, all set. All right, so yeah, so that, that game is more like a bingo game. And then you have another game that's a memory game. And Mrs. Sleesman's going to explain that game for you. All right, so that's also in your packet. You're going to find it. It's going to look like this. You're going to see the little crown and a clown. So this is your memory game. So a lot of you have played memory before. And I caught out one set. And I'm going to lay it out and play and show you. And then I will give you some helpful tips. So don't mind my nursery. <laughs> All right. So I decided to just set it up so that we're starting small with six cards. So the way to play memory is the first person would go flip two over and see if they rhyme. Oh, can pan. Did I get a rhyme? Oh, I did, so I get to keep those cards. Then the next person would go, flip two over. Thread, bread. Ooh, how lucky. Did I make it rhyme? Yes, so that person would get it. Now, the thing is if you don't get a match right away, so say if I said bread and beach, do they rhyme? No, so then I would just flip them back over making sure they're staying in their, the same spot so the next person can try to guess. So with this game, I started oops, with six. Did you? Can you guys still hear me? Okay, <laughs> my computer went crazy for a minute. There we go. Um, I started with six, but we could keep adding on. Um, the better you get with it. So there is a bunch of different cards. So you can make it as big as you can to see how challenging you want it to be. So some tips. I originally thought that on the back that you could color it with crayons so that you couldn't see through. But when I did that, it actually showed you more. So don't use crayons to color over it to hide it. You're gonna wanna use marker. Okay, so you could take marker go over just the whole back of your paper so that you can't see through. And then the same suggestion that Miss Galen gave is maybe putting the word underneath so that you, it helps you. Cause look, if this is a beach, if I didn't see that before, I wouldn't have guessed that was a beach. So that word right there is gonna help me know that it's a beach. Thank you, Mrs. Sleesman. And then I'm just going to share my screen one more time because I just had 
um, a few extras, extensions and adaptations. So you could also use these cards um, as a sorting activity. So you can sort the cards and review uh, rhyming pairs if you wanted to. Um, or it, once they find a match, you can ask if they can think of an additional rhyming word. That's just to make the game a little bit more challenging. Um, or like Mrs. Sleesman said, you can use less cards. You can start off with less cards if you need to and then build up with more cards. All right. Any questions on the memory game? Mrs. Wasilinko. I have another tip that might be helpful. On the memory game, there's a challenge game you can play with this. The last five pages, I'll show you my game that I did. The last five pages are for initial sound. That's beginning sound. So you have to match your pictures by the beginning sound. So when I colored my pictures, I don't know if you can tell, I have a motorcycle that I colored and there's a monkey. So they both begin with the sound of mmm. So that would be a match, but that's a challenge game that you can save to do later on. And this is the last five pages of your packet. Ah, so if you become a master at rhyming, you could play the memory game for initial sounds, the beginning sounds. Awesome. Thank you, Mrs. Wasilenko. All right, so now we're going to give you some time to prepare and to play the memory game. Okay, so the memory game was the game we just talked about uh, that Mrs. Sleesman just modeled, modeled for us. So what you can do is you can take off the top page of your packet and you'll see uh, six cards. So if you have something to color with, you could color in the pictures first if you want to, and then cut the six cards out and you can flip them over. And if you have markers available, you could color over the back like Mrs. Sleesman showed you, and you can play that memory game with either an adult or um, a sibling or a friend that's um, at home with you. One cent. Awesome. One and sun rhyme. Great job, Paisley. I didn't have enough time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was only 15 minutes. Did you spend time coloring them too, Paisley? Yeah. So you probably took your time coloring. I know you're an awesome color. So after we're done, if you want to continue playing, I mean, it's up to mom. <laughs> And you can also send it into daycare tomorrow, Paisley. I know Jameson would like to play with you. Ooh, great, great idea. idea. <laughs> That's a great idea. Thank you, Paisley. Um, and before we go, I just want to share in case you're interested in some other um, rhyming books, um, I've got a list here and I can always, um, I have your email so I can always send this list through an email of some other book recommendations that have rhyme or alliteration in them. Um, and then there's also um, not only books, but there's nursery rhymes, or you can sing songs with rhyme in them, like Hey Diddle Diddle or Down by the Bay is always a really fun one um, to sing to. Um, and then uh, also a goodbye. Sometimes I've, I've done this with uh, classes in the past with a goodbye rhyme. So you would say, see you later, and they would say alligator, or after a while, Crocodile, gotta go, buffalo, see you soon. Raccoon, be sweet, parakeet, take care, polar, bear, good job. In a shake, garter snake, hit the road, happy toad, can't stay, blue, jay, bye bye, butterfly, give me a hug. Lady, bug, good job, I saw Kylie. Doodaloo, Kanga, Roo, time to scoot, little newt. Till then, penguin, adios, oh, yeah. hippos. Yeah. Adios, hippos. Hasta mañana, iguana. Give me a kiss, goldfish. Get in line, porcupine. Out the door, dinosaur. Sure. On the bus, octopus. 
to your house, quiet mouse. Mouse. Our day now mouse. ends, so goodbye, my dear friends. All right. Thank you all for coming um, to our uh, Molly Stark Literacy Game Night. I hope you all have had a really great job, uh, great time. And yeah, thank you bye. to Ms. Wasilenko for putting this all together for us. So thank you so much. Have a great night. Bye. 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 Bye.